Hey guys, so today I'm actually going to be making and showing you guys how to make 3 DIYs to decorate your home. If you can see the background is a little different and it's because we actually moved, which is one of the reasons why I haven't been able to post a video up yet. We were originally going to move a month ago, but that didn't work out the way that we wanted. So everything was in boxes, our Gab and Gabber stuff was in boxes, so it was a little impossible. So I didn't just want to bring you anything. So I figured if we're moving into a home, if you didn't know before I lived in an apartment, if we're moving into a home, might as well transition and you have much more variety of decorations that you can do. So this is actually one of them. This is a centerpiece for a table. It's a fall decoration, so it's gonna look really nice. And I'm gonna show you two other ones as well. So I hope that you like it. I hope you're not mad at me for not putting up a video. As well, I wanted to give you a little bit more of an update if you didn't know. We are actually having a baby boy. We're naming him Nathaniel. Uh, he's gonna be Nathaniel Joab and we're actually six months already. So thankfully I've gotten a lot of compliments that I don't show too much, but I think he's made himself shown very very much to us. <laughs> so I hope that you enjoy the video. I hope that you share it with your friends and that you subscribe. Be expecting more videos from us because of the fact, like I said, it's a new home, more DIYs, more decorations, and it's much more possibilities here than there was in the other place. So I hope you enjoy. Okay guys, so we're gonna start with the first DIY, which is gonna be a really nice decoration for your living room, bathroom, or your own room. And what you're going to need for this is stencils. Now I use leaf stencils of different kinds and I got this from Hobby Lobby. And I used a coupon for it, so you can actually find that in the description box. I'm using acrylic paint and I chose the color palm leaf, but you can choose any color that represents fall for you. I'm using a foam brush, a mason jar, a disposable plate, water, and actually we're going to be tracing from, we're not going to be placing it directly onto the mason jar, so you're going to need a sheet of paper. You're going to trace it and cut it out so that later on you can put it on here. Okay, so we're going to be putting and prepping with two coats. So get your color, place it onto your paper. You can grab it from the inside so you can have a better hold. And you're gonna start from the top to the bottom. Now don't worry if it doesn't cover everything in the first swipe. We're gonna give it a second pass and once you give it the second pass is when it's gonna look really nice. Now you should have something like this. We're gonna leave a bit of a space in the middle because that's where we're gonna be putting the leaf in so that we can later on cover it. Now that the first coat is already dry, we're gonna grab the stencil that we cut out by ourselves. We're gonna go ahead and dip that in water. So you don't want it too wet, but enough that it's coated. Now you're gonna choose the center that we left open and place it on there. Now you're gonna go ahead and give it the second coating. Now this you will need to do very quickly because if the paper dries, it's gonna make it really hard for you to take it off and keep the shape of it. So once it's centered, give it your second coating. Now you're not gonna paint all over it. You're just gonna paint right on the edges. So now we're going to be able to peel it off. Now if you don't really have a lot of time or you want to do this very quickly, something that you can do is use your blow dryer. It will make the process much faster. So you can just do it on low and on heat and it will begin to dry it for you. Focus more on the center. Once you see that the center isn't as wet as the rest of it, you can begin to peel it off. So again, do this very slowly and you should have this leaf pattern out there. Now, if it is a little messy, you could just grab a small little paintbrush, dip it in some water, and then clean the edges around. I actually had already pre-made these three in these colors, as I had said already, and this is how it's gonna look in the end. Now, I just wanted to give it an extra little touch, and you can do this too. I got potpourri, and I got this in vanilla, and I put this in the brown one, but if you don't have potpourri, but you still wanna give it a fall look, 
something you can use is lentils. So you just grab a little bit, just fill it halfway, and I'm gonna put it in the yellow one. About there. And you can also just add a little candle, place it in the middle, and it should look like that in the end. Like I said, you have the option to either alternate with potpourri or with lentils. I think lentil gives it still a nice harvest and fall look, but the potpourri also gives it a nice touch. Okay, so for the second DIY, we're gonna be making a welcome sign for your front door. And to keep it into the fall mood, I used a tree round, which I got at Michael's. And there was no specific size for it, there was just small, medium, or large, so I got large. Now, also in the back, I had already placed it. There are little hooks that you can as well get at Michael's, that's where I got them. I had my husband already push them in. I as well already nailed a nail to the front door. You're also going to need a sponge. You're gonna need chalkboard paint, chalk marker, some yarn, scissors, and that will be it. So, let's get started. So if you're gonna be doing what I'm gonna be doing, uh, have your hair dryer ready like we did in the, in the past DIY. This is gonna make the process much easier if you're trying to do this in a hurry or for a gift for someone, this would make it easier for you. So we're gonna grab our chalkboard paint, place it in the center. Now you get to choose how far you want it. So I'm gonna want it to go up to here because I'm gonna write what now around the edges, you can do this very slowly, just to kind of give it a much cleaner look. Okay. And like I said, I was gonna let mine dry with the blow dryer. So, the same thing that we did in the last one. So now that you see that it's semi-dry, we're gonna give the second coating. And now that you've already kind of outlined the end of how far you want it, like I said, later on little details like this, you can clean up with a smaller brush. But once you've already done that, you can just fill it in again with your second coating. So once you've given it your second coating, normally, like I said, you would give it an hour to kind of sit and rest before you do that, but I'm using my hair dryer just to make the process a little faster since I already want it on my door. Okay, well that looks fairly dry to me. We're actually gonna go ahead and write with our chalk marker what we want in the middle. So remember, this is a welcome sign. So you could just put home, you could put the last name of your family, um, I don't want to do that. I kind of just want to leave it kind of simple and just put welcome. So now this is where your yarn comes in. Now according to how you placed these right here in the back is how long you're going to want your yarn and where your nail is on your door. So I had already kind of had one already prepared, not this one. My husband already measured one for me. And you're just going to have a simple little tie, a little knot right there. We're gonna grab it and place it on these hooks. You should have something like this. So now all you need to do is place it on your door and receive a lot of compliments from all your friends. Okay, so for the third DIY, we're gonna be making a centerpiece for your table. So for this, you're going to need flower foam, these flowers I actually got from Dollar Tree. You can get them on Hobby Lobby, Michaels, but in Dollar Tree they have some really nice flowers as well. You're gonna need a piece of wood or a log. You're gonna need a mason jar. You could choose a mason jar this big or a smaller one. You're gonna need ribbon of your choice, your type of decoration, a candle, paint and scissors, and a hot glue gun if I didn't say it already. The first thing you're gonna do is grab your mason jar and your ribbon. Now I chose this pattern and I thought I got it also at Dollar Tree. I originally wanted to get burlap, but once I saw this, I liked the color of it. It said a lot about Thanksgiving and fall to me. I keep mentioning Thanksgiving. It's because I really want turkey. Pregnant problems. 
you're gonna measure it just to go to the center and just a little more. So it's gonna go right here in the middle. Don't worry, it's not gonna look this plain. I had already pre-cut mine, so this is the measurement that I want for mine. So once you have that, you're gonna go ahead and grab your hot glue gun, place a little bit right here in the middle, and you're gonna center it as well as you can. So this is how it's gonna look. We're gonna be taking the lids off because we don't want that. We're gonna be placing the flowers inside. Now you could just leave it like this and then insert the flower foam inside. But what I chose to do, I grabbed some of this paint and I placed it inside and then I kind of just swirled it around. So I had already actually done two. Okay, so now we're gonna grab the flower foam and stick it inside. I cut it into smaller little pieces just so it can be easier to deal with. Now we're gonna grab your flowers, kind of see the length of how it is, measure where you want them. I'm gonna place these right here in the middle. And this should be your final result for them, at least for these two. Like I said, you can choose to put as many flowers as you want and decorate it however you want, but I like just kind of the basic look that this has. So we're gonna put this to a side. And now just to kind of add a bit of decoration, just find a candle of your choice. You could use white candles according to the colors that you're gonna be using, but I chose red for one because of the smell. My husband liked the smell of the candle and because I like red as well. And I think it's gonna give it a nice little harvest look. So this is how it's going to be. And you're gonna be adding a table runner. If you don't have a table runner, you could just leave it like this. I would stain it if you don't have a table runner, just to kind of give it a nice touch. This is how the final result should be. And it's not gonna take too much time, and it's a nice, simple way of decorating your table.